Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, and if you watch my channel very much, you know that many of the videos are just about testing different products to see how well they work. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at a bunch of different uh, wallets and cards and sleeves um, that supposedly offer protection from this type of RFID theft in which uh, people come in close proximity to your wallet, maybe they have some kind of a reader, and they brush it up against your wallet or your purse, and they're able to steal your credit card information. So these products uh, are supposed to prevent that type of theft, and what I'm going to do today is uh, just conduct a number of experiments. I guess I've got about 20 different wallets and cards and sleeves that I'm going to just check out to see which ones work well. Now, I've set up a, a system here where I have a, a laptop connected to an Arduino microcontroller, and there's a card reader on top of the microcontroller so that I'm able to use one of these cards. This is not a real credit card, of course, but it's a simulated card, and it runs at the same frequency. And I can scan it, and the, the laptop will tell me if it was able to read it or not. So it's a great way to just essentially go through and try out all these different products. I'm going to take the card and put it inside those different products and see if it can still be read. All right, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and move the camera around so you get a better view of the products in the screen as I conduct the test. So the first thing I'm going to do is conduct a couple of baseline experiments just to show that the card reader is operating properly. So I've got the Arduino uh, microcontroller here as well as the card reader on top of it. And when I bring one of the simulated credit cards uh, in close proximity to the card reader, you'll see the text on the screen scroll up and it basically just says that it detected a card. So you can see it jump up each time like so. That means it's reading the card. Now, um, it doesn't actually have to touch the card reader. This one's quite sensitive. So at about two or three inches, it's able to see it. So that'll give us a good indication of whether or not when we put this card inside of a wallet, whether or not it's able to still read it or not. So, and then the other baseline experiment I want to do is I'm just going to take my normal wallet. Um, this is just a simple Johnston & Murphy wallet. And I'm going to put it inside of the wallet. And I'll put it in the very center to make it the hardest to detect. And this is not an RFID wallet, so it should detect it. Let's see how it does. Yeah, it detects it without any problem on either side. So a standard, you know, leather wallet like this um, is easily able to be read remotely by coming in close proximity, you could read the credit card information. So that's just a baseline experiment to show how a non-RFID wallet might work. All right, so from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go product by product, and I'll put links on the screen of just, well, what I'll do is I'll just put the name of the product on the screen. You can go to Amazon and find all of these products. They were all purchased from Amazon, and I got a wide assortment of things um, that, that all claim to be RFID protected just to see how well they work. All right, so let's just start with the first one here. So this is just an Amazon Essentials wallet that is very similar to the one I just showed you. Uh, that's my wallet. And so it's got a little uh, ID spot on the front, and then it's got some slots and a middle slot. All right, so what we'll do first, we'll just go ahead and insert this credit card in the ID slot, that's probably the easiest to detect, and we'll see if we can detect it. We cannot, so the card reader cannot see it in there. And the reason it can't is because there's a conductive barrier behind it, and it prevents the energy from coupling into the card and being able to read it. So we'll try every location just to make sure. Can't read it. Nope, can't read it, so that spot's good as well. We'll try the center location. Nope, can't read it, it's doing great. And then finally, we'll, we'll try these spots at the back. Now, these could also be perhaps not work as well. So let's go ahead and really check those carefully. Nope, not working. I'm going to go ahead and scoot all the way down to the lowest slot where the card is partially exposed. Let's see if that will get blocked. Ah, it is not. So I'm able, when I leave the card partially exposed, from this side, I'm able to read it. Let's see if I could read it from the other side. No. So that's good to know. If you were to use this wallet, the, car, the slot that is partially exposed, you'd want to make sure that you didn't put something that was sensitive. Maybe you put your library card or your movie card or something like that where the information wasn't uh, critical if it was compromised in some way. All right, so that's the Amazon Essentials wallet. Um, did a great job, uh, with the exception of the one pouch on the outside, the lowest one uh, was still able to be read. All right, uh, let's see what else we've got here. The next one is um, something called the Vault Card, and it's an interesting product. Um, instead of a wallet, it, they give you a little card. Now, they only come with one. The vault is fairly expensive, somewhere around like $35. And it, it makes a number of promises. All I'm going to check today is that if you put the vault card adjacent to your credit cards, that you can no longer scan your credit card. And it doesn't matter which side you try and scan from. So let's give that a shot. All right, so I put the vault card there. Let's try first with the vault card down. Nope, can't read it. 
Now we'll try it with the credit card down. Can't read it. So it does just what it promises to do. It prevents you from being able to come and uh, swipe that information. Now, just to get it, put it through the test a little bit better, a lot of times we have more than one credit card. We'd want to know that the distant credit cards were also being protected. So I'm going to take a few of my credit cards and put them in the stack. And I'll put the vault at the other end of the stack like so. And then I'll go ahead and scan it. Still can't read it, even from the side that's not the vault side. Great. So it really did a great job. The vault card um, really provided protection just like it promised it would. And it did that regardless. I have a, there was a total of four credit cards and it protected all four without any trouble. So that seems like a really good product. Uh, again, you just slip it in your wallet. So for example, if I had my, my wallet, I would just put the vault card in the center of the wallet and I could put my, my card here and I could do a scan and I can't scan it anymore can't be swiped that way. So that's really a neat, simple, easy to use product. Now, there are other options to the vault card and there's another one I'm gonna show you that's quite a bit cheaper. So you might hang on and uh, before you run out and get this one, you might consider that one as well. All right, so I'll put the vault card over there. Okay, so the next product we're gonna look at are some of these RFID sleeves. Now these particular ones are by a company, I believe it's AERB, I'll put the product name on the screen. But these are really just paper sleeves that have a little layer of foil inside of them. And, and basically they, they create a little mini Faraday cage, if you will. And you put your card in here and you scan them and they can't be read. So it's a nice, simple solution. They're cheap, you get a bunch of sleeves. This one comes with two different sizes. Uh, the only thing I don't like about these sleeves, they work fine, but they're just very fragile. They're glued together paper, basically. And it's very easy to pull them apart uh, accidentally as you're taking your cards in and out. And also you really could only get one credit card in a sleeve. Any more than that, I think the card would just, the sleeve would just get torn up. So it, it has its advantages, it's cheap. There's a number of them, so if you tear one up, you can use the next one. But the disadvantages are you can only put up one card in a time and they're pretty fragile, but they do work. So that's a sleeve. Uh, let's see, the next one, let's take a look at the flip side wallet. All right, so again, I just tried to order some interesting looking products just to give you an idea of how things work. So this is a plastic wallet, sort of like a minimalist design. It's got a little band here. Um, you can open it up from the end here and it's got a little credit card area and, and a little area in the back, area in the front. So let's just give it a shot. We'll put the card there in the middle. See if we can read it. Nope. Nope, can't read it. So it does a great job there. And just for completeness, let's check the outer the outer area, I could see myself putting a credit card there. Can't read it. <clears throat> All right, so the flip, flip side wallet seems to do great in terms of RFID protection. Uh, last place I might try is I might just set a credit card in there and see how well it does. Still can't read it. So this one does the job just fine. And it's an interesting little wallet. It's got a lot of little uh, interesting clips and compartment areas where you could store things. Uh, and it's totally encapsulated. Got a little uh, strap here for something on the back as well. So interesting wallet, flip side wallet. Did a great job of RFID protection. Okay, so the next product is some more of these RFID blocker cards. This one is by Antitoco. And again, I'll put the name on the screen. So the Antitoco card is a little bit different. Um, if you put the Antitoco card up against the credit card and you attempt to scan it, you're able to read it from one side, which is interesting. So from this side, I wasn't able to read it. Uh, well, it, maybe it did go through that. Yeah, it did actually go through that time. So it, it seems a little inconsistent when I just use a single card, but that's not the way the product is meant to be used. The product is actually meant to sandwich the credit card. So this is a different type of thing than let's say the vault card. And when you sandwich it, you're not able to read the credit card from either direction. All right, so it works fine as long as you use it the way they intended. But it is a little bit of a pain because now you have to sandwich your cards with two other cards and they're fairly thick. Let's give it a try. Let's give our credit card test a try. So we're gonna stick our credit card. Now we've got a total of four cards in here. So these cards are spaced further apart. Let's see if we can still read it. Nope. Try this side. No. So the anti-toco cards do work. They seem to work just as advertised. You just need to know that they're, they're used differently than let's say the vault card 
or there's one other card similar to the vault that I'll show you in a minute. So you have to use these in pairs. It comes with four of them, so you have enough for two wallets, really. All right, go ahead and set those out of the way. The next one is another Amazon's Basics leather wallet. This is just a standard sort of bifold type wallet, little money compartment there. So we'll go ahead and try a few spots here. I'll put a credit card in here. See if we can read it. Nope, we cannot. It can't be read. All right, so that's great. We'll put one, I always like to put one in the, uh, the ID area and see how that does. No, can't read it. Okay, so it seems to do fine. So we'll try and see if we can test uh, maybe the outermost pocket. So that the weakest pocket would likely be uh, one of them here where you're partially exposed. They go down pretty deep, so it's probably going to be fine. Yeah, can't read it either way. So this wall, this Amazon Basics, really doesn't seem to have a weak spot. Um, I'm going to try right here just to be double safe. Again, they all go down pretty deep. Yeah, can't read it. So, so this one seems to do great. All right, and again, I'll put the name on the screen, but it's just an Amazon's Basic Bifold wallet, a uh, leather wallet. Seems to do good. All right, let's see what else we've got. We've got some more of these sleeves. These are by Alpine Rivers. Um, I like these sleeves just a little bit better than the previous ones I showed you. They just seem like they're, they're made with a little bit better paper. It's sort of a uh, plasticized paper, and they end up with a little bit of an exposed lip here, which makes it a lot easier to get them open. So again, you put the card in there. You can see there's a silver metal in there, and you try and scan it, and you can't get it. All right, so they work great. Now, they still have the disadvantage of you can't put really more than one. Maybe you could get two in these cards. They're a little bit more roomy. Um, but there's still that limitation. But they work great, and they do seem to be a little sturdier than the other ones. Just the way that they're built, the product seems a little sturdier. So I do like those, these Alpine Rivers. All right, put those up. Now, we would expect that most of these products would work, right? To block an RFID reader is not difficult to do, so it's not surprising that most of these products work as advertised. What I'm trying to show you is that there might be some vulnerabilities to some of the project, uh, products based on where you put the cards. All right? The next one are these Slim Liang uh, RFID blocking cards. Now, these are very similar to the Vault card in terms of their function. One thing that's different is you get four of them instead of just one. All right? Now, there's only three here because one of them I was using earlier to test, but you get four of them in the package, and if you take the, the, the Slim Lane card and you put it up against your credit card, can't read it, can't read it. And that was with just one card, so you don't need two cards um, like the Antitoco ones that we looked at. Now let's give it a try again with multiple credit cards, all right? Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put the, the detection one at the very back, so it's the furthest distance away from the Slim Lane protective card. All right, here we go. Can't read it. And then we'll go the other direction. Still can't read it. So this one does great. Um, it's inexpensive. You get four of them. I don't remember the exact price. I'll look it up, but it's somewhere around $10 or so. Um, and so you get four of them. You can pass them to other family members or put them in different uh, wallets or purses. And they seem to really do a great job. So I really like those. All right. And go on to the next one. Um, this one is a Buffway wallet. Um, it's sort of similar to the one that, that I use. Get in here. Just a real simple, simple wallet like so. Um, we'll go ahead and take the, the card, slide it in the ID pouch. We'll just see how well that works. Yeah, can't read it on either side. Um, we'll just try a few of the slots. We'll make sure it's not susceptible. It's not. Um, Let's see what else. We'll go ahead and go in the center. Nope, can't read it there either. And then finally, we noticed before that there were some susceptibilities when the card is partially exposed. So this one I would think is going to be fine because it's completely buried and it does work fine. Let's check the middle one. Still works fine. Now let's see if the bottommost slot, it's not as it has this little notch that's exposed. Um, so let's just see if it'll read it. It does read it. So similar to the other card that we had of this design, that outermost pocket where you end up with some of the card exposed, 
is still able to be read uh, with the card reader. So we would want to know, again, not to put uh, credit cards there, but maybe some other type of just uh, basic card, like a library card or something that wouldn't be important if that information was able to be uh, stolen. All right, so again, this is the Buffway product, seems to do very well. See what else we got. All right, this is the Exter, E-K-S-T-E-R. I think it's the Parliament is the name of the product. Again, I'll put the, the actual name on the screen. This is a neat little product. Um, it's a, it folds open, it's got a leather exterior and folds open and then there's a little credit card ejector that, that goes there. So your credit cards go in this little vault here on the end and then they just pop up and you pull out whatever credit card you want. Got a little money uh, belt right there, which is great. And then it's got a couple of pouches right there. Uh, as well as one on the outside, all right? So let's give it a good test. So first things first, we'll put it where it's supposed to be, the credit card in the credit card vault here, and we'll see if it's able to be read. No, can't read it. All right, so the vault is definitely protected. Now, if I were to stick a credit card in one of these other spots, let's see. Ah, I'm able to read it. So this area over here is not protected from RFID, at least as far as my reader can tell. So that would be very useful to know is that you wouldn't want to put your credit cards here, but instead you'd put your credit cards in the vault. Let's try that backmost pocket to see how well that one works. Still able to be read. So a really nice product. I, I really do like it. It's a pretty neat product. I could see myself carrying this wallet. Again, it's got the neat little pop-up credit cards like so, but the pouches on this side and the pouch at the back would not be RFID protected nearly as well as the ones inside the vault. So you put your credit cards in the vault and you should be good to go. All right, so that's the Exter. The next one is this Protective wallet. And it really, I think it's actually listed as a woman's wallet, but I think it could go either way. It looks like an old timey cigarette case is what it looks like, but it pops open and there's a little accordion sort of a plastic accordion in here. And you can put your credit card in any one of those and close it up. And as you'd expect, this should be RFID protected because it's just a, a box of metal, right? And can't read anything. So this would work great. And it's kind of a neat little thing if you were just keeping credit cards in here, maybe an ID too or something. That's the protective and it's just a metal case, all right? Put that one up. Uh, the next one is HIMI. And it's a traditional looking leather wallet, uh, very similar to that Amazon Basics one. It's got the little ID and then some spots here. So let's check it like we did the other one. Put the card reader there, or the card there first and try it. Nope, can't read it. So that's great. Uh, and then we'll try on each side here. Can't read that one. Let's try this bottom most pocket. All right, now it is inside the shell of the wallet, so I suspect it's gonna be fine, but let's just try it. Yeah, it's fine. So just like the other, just like the Amazon Basics one, uh, this HIMI wallet also, uh, all of the spots essentially are protected. Um, if you were to put your credit card in any of them, you should be fine in terms of an RFID type theft. So that's pretty neat. It's a nice soft leather wallet. Put that one up. All right, the next one is, um, if you're into minimalist wallets, you'd know this brand, it's called Dango. Now, I've reviewed one of their wallets before. This one's actually one of their nicest wallets, in my opinion. It's their M2 Maverick wallet, and it's got a little leather front here, and then it's got a, a metal housing at the back where you would store your credit cards in that little uh, area right there, and then it's got a, a money band as well. Really nice wallet, but, but an expensive wallet too, no doubt about it. All right, so, First, I'll try it in the little vault area here at the back. So this is sort of pulls out, you store your credit cards in there. You can pop them up anytime you want. And now there are little pieces of the credit card exposed, but there's so much metal here, I suspect it will do fine. Let's see. Yeah, can't read it there. If I come the other direction, no, can't read it. So that works fine. You put your credit cards in the vault and in this little area between the plates of metal and it, it won't be read. Now let's try this, uh, the one in the front here. Uh, this is pretty tight to get in and out, so I'm gonna leave just a little bit of the card out like this, and let's see if it'll still read it uh, like that. It will not. All right, try both ways, no. So there's enough metal here that even if you didn't put your ID in all, the, or your credit card in all the way in this particular front spot, it would still be protected. 
All right, so it's neat. It's called the Dango M2 Maverick. A very nice, expensive wallet. I think it's about $159 or something. So it's not cheap, but it is pretty cool. All right, I really like their products. Uh, very neat. And if you're interested in it, this type of wallet, you might check out my other review of the, the minimalist wallets that I did, uh, I don't know, about six months ago or so. All right, so we'll put the, the Dango wallet away. Um, our next one is another minimalist wallet that's very well known. This one's called the Ridge. Um, this one's in the titanium finish. And Ridge is another you know, expensive, high quality wallet. Um, it's essentially all metal with the exception of this money band at the back. And this one's pretty neat. It, you basically just have a little two plates of metal that hold the cards together and you can pop them up with a little thumb spot right there. And you store your, your cards right in here. So I put my credit card in there. Now again, it's sandwiched between two plates of metal, so I would not expect it to be able to be read, and it cannot be, all right? So it works beautifully, and it it's really is the definition, if you will, of a minimalist wallet. I mean, it's just, it's just something elegant about it being so small, if you think about in your pocket. And again, I review one of these Ridge wallets also on that other video. So, but in terms of RFID protection, it does great. Now this wallet's not quite as expensive as the Dango Maverick was, but it's still, you know, $100 or more. Um, but again, some people were willing to pay that for a nice quality product like this. All right, put that one up. All right, we got a few more here. These are um, just simple sleeves, uh, almost like anti-static bags is what they're made of. Again, you know, you can really only put one card in each sleeve, but you can see they're, they're lined with metal. It's a sputtered metal aluminum and when you have the card in there you can't read it um, simple these are more durable no doubt about it than some of those paper sleeves it's they definitely seem more durable to me but again you can really only put one card in it now if you had a purse or a wallet and you only carried one credit card you know maybe sliding this in it would be fine and that would do great so uh, these these sleeves um, do a fine job again just with the sort of the same limitations as the other sleeves had all right all right, the next one is um, another wallet. This one is by SWZA. Let me get in here. Ah, yes, this one is essentially a clone of a Ridge wallet, right? It looks, this one's a carbon fiber instead of that titanium finish, but you can tell it looks very similar. It's got the little thumb notch. It's got the two plates that squeeze together. This one's got a money clip, but some things come with money bands as well. Um, and you can put your card in there and let's see how that does. Yeah, I can't read it and I can't read it. So it does fine. It does just like the uh, Ridge did. It protects it because it's sandwiching between it and it must have a couple of thin layers of metal in those plates. So this type of clone is much less expensive than the Ridge. Um, and I'm not going to weigh in on the quality of it versus the Ridge. I'd let the, the buyer sort of do their own review on that. It seems pretty well made to be honest. Um, I think it sounds, it feels like it would last and the carbon fiber is kind of neat. It's lightweight um, and again, much less expensive, but I'll let you guys be the judge for yourself what you want to carry. But it does do uh, an excellent job of RFID protection. Okay, so the last one that I've got um, is a wallet by Travax. This is the Travax Contour and it is really a beautiful wallet. If you've never looked up Travax, uh, do yourself a favor and go check their products out. Um, this is the Travax Contour. It's got sort of this gold finish, but they have a number of different products. And it's really simple. It's got this directional snap that can only come one direction. And then it's got a little pouch here that you store your ID and your credit cards. And then a little area at the back where maybe you could keep some money or another card. It's just really nice. It's really sort of the definition of minimalist. It's got a little carabiner hook uh, right there and a little um, bottle opener right there. So beautiful, well-made, quality product. Now, they don't claim that this contour is RFID protected. So I want to make that clear. But they do say that it's resistant. And I believe that because it's got a big metal frame. That certainly would help. Um, but I think if you actually insert the card in here and you close it up, I think what you'd find is you're able to read it because there's just so much card exposed. Let's see how we do. Yes, it's able to read it without any trouble from both sides. So it may indeed help with the RFID levels. It may make them smaller, um, but it's not enough to be fully protected. And again, they don't claim that it is. Now, one way around that, of course, is to to couple your cards with, let's say, this Vault card or this Slim Lang card, and you can just stick that card in there with it. Let's see if it can read it now. 
Ah, we're still able to read it. Interesting. So that's an interesting thing. With the slim laying on the top, I was able to still read the card. Let's try it on the back and see if that might do it. Now they're putting the card sandwich between this metal and the other card. I can still read it. So something about the particular geometry, and it's really interesting because if I just take this card by itself, I'm not able to read it in either direction. Fascinating. Um, but when I put it inside of the, the contour, I was able to read the card. So there's some geometry things going on with this metal frame here, maybe acting as an antenna of some sort. And that's really fascinating. Um, let's try it with the vault card just to be complete here. Again, if it's just the vault by itself, I can't read it. That does just like the Slim Land card. If I put it in the, the contour here, let's see how it does. Ah, I cannot read it. Really interesting. So, you know, there's the old saying, you get what you pay for. And I really like these Slim Land cards because in my normal leather wallet, if I put one in, I can have a whole batch of credit cards and it cannot be read. Um, I've tried it. I, I actually keep one of these in my wallet. And the vault card's quite a bit more expensive and you only get one of them. But as you see in this very special case where you had this metal frame, when I put the, the less expensive card in there, I was still able to read it. Uh, but when I put the vault card in there, I could not read it uh, from either side. So that's really an interesting experiment. So again, this is just one particular wallet. It's a unique one where you have a metal frame um, and the card you know, essentially goes in this little pouch at the back. By itself, it's not RFID protected. It might have some resistance, but it's not protected. And you could put in a card to help protect it, um, but the only one that really seemed to fully work was the vault card in this particular case. All right, so that's really good information. Again, this is a beautiful wallet. I wouldn't let the fact that it's not RFID protected deter you, but you might want to think about coupling it with, uh, with the vault card to protect your, your information from those credit cards. All right? Okay, so that's all the experiments I have today. I went through all the different items. Um, now what I'll do is I'll just do a quick closeout and talk to you about my findings. All right, well, we're all finished with the testing. Hopefully that was interesting and maybe even a little informative. The bottom line was that the products that claim to have RFID protection, by and large, did. It's a fairly easy thing to implement. You just basically need a very thin layer of metal. There were a few interesting points we learned, like about not using the outermost compartments on some of the wallets because it leaves a little too much of the card exposed and they can still be read. Um, and we looked at different types of blocking cards. Some of them seem to require two cards where you sandwich your credit cards between them. That was the anti-toco ones. Um, the Slim Liang cards seem to do a great job. It only requires one card. And it works perfectly in my leather wallet um, where I can't read any of the cards. But when I put it inside of that Travex wallet that had a metal frame, it didn't fully protect it, which was interesting. Um, and then there's the vault card, which is the more, most expensive of the bunch. And, um, but I will say it's the only card that when I put it in that metal framed contour wallet that prevented it from being read. So I, you know, it seems like a very high quality card where they have some additional technology in there that really helps it. So lots of different options. There's sleeves, which are very inexpensive. Again, a little bit uh, fragile, but they also work quite well. And a number of basic wallets of all different designs uh, that seem to do a great job of protecting your credit card information. So uh, again, I hope this was interesting. If you have some questions, uh, let me know. This was just a sampling of wallets that I bought from Amazon, um, but, and I don't have any stake in any one of them. Uh, it was really just an independent test just to see what worked and what didn't work. All right, I hope this was interesting. Uh, if it was, you might consider subscribing to the channel.